Yeah, no, I never even thought about it in block one. In block two, I convinced Mel Beach to make the whole thing for me, so it never dawned on me then either. Block three, however, I thought to myself, oh, there's something else we can make with this. I'm gonna show you right now, let's get started. Wait, 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 wait. There's more than something else we can make with what's going on with this, but let me slow down as I'm always caffeinated. Hello everybody, I am Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. Welcome to Making It Fun. I am super excited you're here. Today's tutorial is goofing off. It's how to goof off in your studio. Now I touched on this a little while ago. It's gonna be a video based on how I used my design wall and my cell phone, a little bit of technology, to take some photos and really rearrange blocks and give myself a really great idea, both mathematically and visually, what I'm gonna need to make my quilt top. I touched on it a little while ago, but we're gonna spend a bunch of time on it today and I'm gonna show you some tricks. So let me show you where this idea started, because if you've been watching the peak into Batik, our wonderful Batik slow along, our block of the month, you know that we have 12 blocks where every center is a different square, a different cool block unit like this, but all of them are gonna finish with these same outside edges. So when we're building these outside edges to make it into a, a star shape, we're gonna be using the same units over and over and over again. And those units are one of these rectangles here, which is a eight and a half by four and a half inch rectangle. And then to make the star points here, we're also adding in two of these four and a half by four and a half inch squares. We're gonna make what is considered to be a, if you look at just this unit right here, that's a flying goose, flying geese unit, something like that. But the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna kind of sew on and then cut off the scrap. Today, we're all about the scrap. It's the scrap we're working with to make these awesome half square triangles. And I'm gonna show you with just a few half square triangles how you can design a whole other quilt just using your phone and one of those wonderful little social media apps that we all love. But let's talk about how to build these real quick in case you wanna use this video as your very first start off. You're jumping into quilting point. So what we're gonna do here is I have these two four and a half inch squares. They've already been pre-cut down. Now what I need is one diagonal line drawn from edge to edge. I use a fine tip Sharpie marker for that. It's gonna be a cutting line, so it's not. I'm not worried about it bleeding through. Fine tip so I can just barely see it. Gosh, you could barely see that at all. Let's do it a little bit better. How's that? Ah, thank you. So at any rate, then what we wanna do is we wanna take one at a time, these squares, and we're gonna lay them so that this outside edges, I'm worried about these outside edges are matched up. And now we're gonna sew on our sewing machine using our needle right on that line. So I happen to have an edge guide on this sewing machine, so I just laid it on top of the fabric. It's not gonna be in my way at all. Okay, so after that is stitched on, now what I wanna do first is I wanna trim off the excess. So I'm gonna use the same ruler just to protect my hand. I'm gonna lay it on here, but I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. And because it's this extra part that we're talking about for today's video, this makes the border for the other videos we're doing, right? I want you to make sure you do all of these the same so that you can work better and better as we go. So at any rate, quarter inch seam allowance right off of that drawn line, which was then your sewing line. It is now your marking line. It's these two pieces we need. Normally what you do, you'd come back on over to your ironing surface, go ahead and press this over first. You would take your other square and you're gonna lay that on there just like yay, so that it forms a triangle, forms a tip, sew that on, and go ahead and trim it off, and you'll keep making all of those to perform your borders for that star, blah, blah, blah. Here's what I want you to now focus in on. Let's take these two pieces of scrap. Yeah, it sounds like that, doesn't it? And then we're gonna go ahead and sew another quarter inch seam allowance across the bottom now. So I'm just gonna lower my presser foot. Let the edge guide do the work. Okay. 
Now this time we're going to press it open before we do any trimming, and you've probably heard the term press to the dark side, which means hold your darker of the two fabrics up in the air, lay your brand new beautiful iron. <laughs> yes, some of you are wondering, what's going on with this guy and his iron choices? He's always changing out his irons. Well, maybe we'll talk about that another time. But in case you were wondering, yes, we've got a new Panasonic back on the set. I love the 360 cordless. The other one died after just five years of hard use. Anyways, so we have our square made. It's called a half square triangle at this moment. We're going to trim this down. I've already measured these. I've already been cutting all of these to three and a half inches. That's the measurement for this project. Either way, the way I want you to do this is I want you to find this diagonal line, a 45 degree line there on your ruler. Go past the line you want to cut. So there's three and a half, there's three and a half, right? So when I take this now and I trim it up here, I'm doing two sides at once. I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to rotate that 180 degrees so I can use the same line just like you saw me do. Now I'm going to line it up perfect on that three and a half inch corner. And if that diagonal runs right down my half square triangle, those are going to be perfectly awesome. And they're all going to be the same now at three and a half inches. And with that at three and a half inches, I've got a bunch of these. You probably need at least 16 to play with this design because it's a half square triangle. But now let's take a moment, throw these over on the design wall and let me show you what I'm talking about here. Now, as we're over at the design wall, the first thing I like to do is keep all of my parts and pieces all stacked in the same orientation, even though we're going to change this around a bunch. And again, you can do this any way you like, right? So let's start with something real basic. Let's call it like a pinwheel star. So we're going to start with four pieces, four units that are half square triangles, and we're going to start with them in the middle, and we're just going to build our pinwheel to begin with. Now, I've already trimmed these down, so I want to make... Again, we're taking photographs and I want my photos to look as crisp and as square as possible because the cell phone and the little application is going to do all the hard work for me when I'm done. So now I'm just basically putting up a nice clean pinwheel. So you can see how the black and the blue just kind of chase each other around that way. And then I'm going to go to my cell phone and the first thing I want to do is I want to take a photo. And what I'm going to then do is in my photo settings is I'm going to actually use a uh, square application. Um, once I get it squared, then I zoom in on the block as close as I can to try to get rid of as much of the excess. Let's get a better one. There we go, of the excess as possible. Once I have that done, then I go ahead and I open up another app, and this is from Instagram, but you download it separately, and it's called Layout. And you can get it for Android or iPhone. Once you have the um, application open, then you choose the picture or pictures. You can do a bunch. Remember, you can take a bunch of different blocks, photo, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of you. So long story short, I choose the picture, then I scroll through all of the different layout options, and here I can pick one that shows uh, roughly 12 blocks of that unit, and now you can see what happens with just that pinwheel. As it goes around here, it makes a pinwheel or broken dishes quilt. So, pretty fun. You can even hit save. You can do different edits and different things from there. Let's go back and expand on this idea just a little bit further because we kind of get an idea what that's going to do. Now what we can also do is let's build out in um, a couple of different directions. So I don't know what it's going to look like. I am playing right now. So let's say what would happen if we did this one like this this one like this. And again, this is how I experiment and I play. I enjoy technology, but I have to say that I don't love to spend a ton of time on my computer. I'd much rather spend more time on the sewing machine and on the design wall. So this kind of thing for me is super fun and enjoyable because it's so very tactile. And that's what I like to do. You see how it looks like they're forming out the extra ribbons there as we go. So then what would happen? Let's see if I put on here, 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 and here. And I don't think I like where that's going yet. So maybe what we do is something like this, filling in the blue. Then like that. Now, 
back to the cell phone. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to capture yourself a new photograph. So go back to your photo app. And then with the photo app you've got, remember I've got it set for the square formatting so I don't have to crop it. So I just trim it down. I'm looking at it till I don't have any gray showing. Hold my breath, take the picture. <laughs> Once I have the photo, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bounce it back over into that Layouts app. Now, when you open up the Layouts, the photograph is gonna be waiting right there for you, but so will probably be the other ones you've been playing with. So I'm gonna go ahead and touch that to make it go away. I'm gonna to touch the new one and I'm gonna put it into that layout like that. And it is actually pretty neat looking, wouldn't you say? I mean, it's terrific that way. You can hit Save now. Let me show you what I started to show you a moment ago, but I was getting ahead of us. So now that I've saved it, I can go back and I can actually go back one more time, uncheck the original photo from here, and now I can check the photo of the group, the synthetic project, and now I can touch it again. Look at that. And you can see and quickly calculate how many half square triangles you would need to make this really cool quilt that now looks like it has a, like a, a saw blade going on inside. Maybe you don't like that design and you want to say, well, wouldn't it be easier if I just change? And this is where the manipulation becomes very, very quick, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here and maybe I just want to change a couple of them. Oh, I sure like the way that's starting to look. Again, because it's a new arrangement, I'm gonna go back on the cell phone. I'm gonna open up the camera. I'm gonna to try to get it squared. I think my cutting board's in the way, or the ironing board's in the way, don't you? Take that photo again. You know what I'm gonna say. Back over to the uh, Instagram layouts, and then you often have to hit back, and just don't forget to uncheck the original. Now I check this new one, there it is, that's the whole new quilt just by rearranging a few of those blocks. Super, super easy. Now, of course, you know I've been playing with this and playing with this because it's what I really enjoy doing. So now, well, let's just take a moment, let me bring you in nice and close in here to the cell phone, and let's take another second here and talk about what happens with a few other blocks. So what you can also do now is I could save that one and the other block that we shot a moment ago. Now, as I come on over and pick out that layout, now you'll notice what happens as you look here closely. One of these is already um, changed out. But if I want the other one to change out, I'm going to switch. You notice if I touch whichever one I touch, it becomes the activated one. Then I can do replace. Once I do replace, technically I come back into the category of all of the images that I've put up and therefore I can come in and say that. And now I've changed out this quilt, technically making a quilt with the first sample block we made and the second sample block we made, 50% of each. So again, calculations are super, super easy and super, super fun this way. One last little trick I wanna share with you here. Let's go ahead real quick and make one more fun block because we can, right? So let's see, let's take something out. Let's make the pinwheel change. Well, we know what'll happen if I do that. Okay, so here's just another quick swap, another super fast and easy little changeover in the block, but maybe I'm concerned that I want some sashing. So then what I do when I go to take the photograph, go back to your photo app, and in that photo app, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put on some sashing with my photograph. So you see how I have it, and I've taken the picture. Oh, it didn't take a very good picture though. Let's do it again. There. So I tried to calculate in some equal distances of the gray background. Yes, the new design wall looks fantastic. You are correct. So anyways, bouncing back into the Instagram layouts, here's that new photograph I just chosen. And now as I come on over here, you can see what it would look like 
with the sashing in here. Now this block is fairly symmetrical, but the other thing you can do within Instagram layouts is you can do a mirror flip of your images. Now, because of the way I put on my borders, obviously it flipped the whole thing around, right? And it will tell you because there'll be little blue boxes in there. You can see what's going on. You can flip it. You can do all different things and then you can deactivate them. So that's another way you can change the layout or the design of your blocks if you're making non-symmetrical blocks and you wanna see, do I want this quarter turned or whatnot as you go through and play. And really folks, if you're brand new to quilting, that's what this should all be about. It all should be about playing and experimenting and coming up with an idea or seeing a beautiful block that you really wanna try yourself and then coming on into your studio and breaking it down and making it happen. You know, I get a lot of questions about the different sizes of the different units I use and or the different ways that I do my layouts and stuff and for me, I like to sew. It's one of the places I just kind of let my mind go, my hands go. So a lot of times I'll just do a bunch of the same size. I don't even care what size it is. And then I'll start with something like this and I can quickly and effectively make a block and a quilt come together. And I actually had to do this recently for our May quilt release that you will all be seeing very, very soon. And as I was playing with some of my experimental blocks on the table, I thought, hey, all of my friends over at Making It Fun definitely need to know this trick. And I know I touched on it in Karen's shop over at Sew and Save in Racine while Mike and Mike and I were playing in her quilt shop there. But I really wanted to spend a little bit more time for all of you today that like to play with technology and fibers give you this little information. So hopefully that helped. Instagram layouts is my trick that I use on the design wall on the cell phone to get me a head start before I make a fantastic quilt that I can share with all of you right here next time at Making It Fun. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another Helping of Fun.